From the very early days of initial family therapy models like the Milan model or its later developments like Tom Anderson's reflecting team formats, until the recent constructionist developments like dialogic or collaborative approaches, there is extensive theoretical discussion in our field but also practice related to our effort to include what we have termed as reflexive processes or reflexivity, namely processes where we are actually invited to reflect upon the ways in which we actively construct any activity or phenomenon in which we participate, say in a kind of a self-referential manner. Now this conversation, this discussion, has entered the field of family therapy training. Uh, I think that for those of us who have been involved in training processes from either side of the one-way screen, either from the position of a trainer or from the position of a trainee, well, we may share between us in, our, in the course of our everyday training interactions our experience of what it feels like, but we know very little in terms of empirical systematic research. What does it feel like to be trained to become a reflexive practitioner? What is it like to do that while you're still in training? When Dimitri Yevropoulou who is my co-author in this article which is being published by the Journal of Fa Marital and Family Therapy, approached me with her idea to do a qualitative study in order to explore this issue, I thought that, it was, that this was a really good idea. On the one hand, I was familiar uh, with the fact that there is actually very little empirical research on systemic family therapy training. On the other hand, I was also aware of this ongoing discussion in our field of how to actually include personal development aspects in our training practices and the related recent conversation about uh, the dialogic therapist self. But most importantly, as a trainer and an academic teacher, in my efforts to actually engage my trainees or students in the development of reflexivity, I have always been really curious to find out what it is like for them from their perspective. So myself and Dimitra engaged into designing this interpretative phenomenological study. Dimitra went on and talked with systemic family therapy trainees in order to actually tackle their experience and she did semi-structured interviewing and we were both intrigued by their responses. Actually, uh, we found out that systemic family therapy trainees seem to connote reflexivity as a process, a very challenging one, a multifaceted one, which somehow seems to require a very delicate balance, a constant move or, if you wish, fluctuation between a level of inner dialogue, that is a dialogue which takes place by one with oneself, and outer conversations which may take place actually uh, between trainees or between trainees and trainers. They also talk about reflexivity as being a process which takes place both concurrently with the action upon which one reflects, but also subsequently at a later time, like for example in the dialogic space of indirect supervision. Uh, so we think that our study can possibly alert us to actually find some space for that in our training models to be more attentive to our trainees' voices and actually engage with them into, say, a kind of reflexivity about reflexivity and how it is being developed in training. So if you are a, a family therapy trainee or a trainer, maybe you would like to find out more about these ideas and about our research by reading our article. You're very welcomed to send us your feedback, whatever you, thoughts or ideas you have about it, by getting in touch with us via this email address. Both myself and Dimitra Givropoulou very much hope that you will 
enjoy reading our article. Thank you very much.